Hello, the internet. Welcome to Open Source Directions, hosted by Open Teams, the first B2B marketplace for open source support and services. Open Source Directions is the webinar that brings you all the news about the fa your favorite open source projects. My name is Henry Badry, and I'm the growth marketer here at Open Teams, and I'll be your host today for Open Source Directions. And co-hosting with me today is... Hi, I'm Medikin, and I'm excited to be the co-host for this episode of Open Source Directions. I'm a postdoc at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I work on the YT project, and I'm based in Urbana, Illinois. Thank you. And Carlos? Hi, everyone. My name is Carlos Cordova. I'm the current maintainer of SPIDER, and I'm based in Colombia. Fantastic. Stephanie, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Stephanie. I am a biomedical and software engineer from, from Colombia. And right now I'm doing my master's in software engineering and I've been working in SPIDER for a little longer than a year. Hey everyone, I'm Juanita. I am a mathematician from Colombia. Um, I'll be doing my PhD in cybersecurity next year. Um, and I've been working in SPIDER for about a year and a half. Hi, uh, my name is Gonzalo. I'm a civil engineer by trade and I've been working as a software engineer for the past five years and almost that same time working with Spider as a core developer. I'm currently a core developer at Quansight and I'm from Bucaramanga, currently living in Bogota, Colombia. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So uh, this is going to be a great episode. We're very, very excited. I've been looking forward to it all week. And we're going to kick it off with our famous personalization section, where we'll give you a tweet of the week or a headline of the week, uh, just to give a good uh, introduction of ourselves. So I think we'll get Medigan. Do you want to start? Sure, that sounds great. I have a tweet from Ryan Abernathy, who works on Pangeo. Um, and on Earth Day, he tweeted a uh, bot that uh, I think takes random points in the ocean and then makes figures uh, of those points using Pangeo. It's a very cool bot. I encourage all of you to take a look at it. Um, I am not anybody who knows anything about oceanography, so I don't know the meaning of the plots, but you can all enjoy it and see some beautiful data visualization. Fantastic. And Carlos, do you have your... Yeah, mine is more sports directed, so today, it's uh, 26 years from of uh, Ayrton Senna's death, and I was a huge fan of him. So it's very sad. Okay. And Juanita or Stephanie? Mine is yeah. actually. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's. <laughs> no, no, I'm actually. actually... Mine is actually uh, a tweet from Spider ID, um, which was about the live streaming that we did last week, um, and I was surprised that it had the really good like um, yeah people were like really enjoying this this new event that we created. So yeah, check our tweet in. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Anita. And we can also find the tweets in the chat if you have a look. Ah, uh, Stephanie. Um. Yeah into the PyTorch 1.5 release. I was really amazed by the distributed autograd and optimized your implementations. Fantastic. They're going and to be super useful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so my headline tweet for this week is from from our uh, for Guido Van Rossum. Uh, he was informing about Python 3.9 being uh, out and it has some fantastic new features, including uh, union operations between dictionaries and a new pet parser, among other things. So that was that was a fun tweet to read. Great. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. That was great. Mine isn't a tweet, but it's a headline. And I was excited the other day when I had a conversation with my mom and I learned that Australia had flattened the curve. So I just wanted to share that article. I gave a few tips on how we did it and I implore everyone to keep staying safe and keeping everyone yeah everyone realizes that lives are at risk so just i think we keep fighting this together and yes so now we're going to go into the product uh, pro project introduction section where we'll give you an outline of spider and we'll also uh, answer a few questions uh, that we've put together so spider is a powerful scientific environment written in python 
It integrates with a number of prominent packages in the scientific Python stack, including NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and many more. Uh, they have 5,400 stars on GitHub, which is amazing. Uh, they have around 200,000 downloads a month across PyPy and Conda, and they have around 300 issues per month and around 60 pull requests per month. So that's fantastic. It is a very popular project. I have heard of Spider a lot, uh, so I'm keen to learn more about it. Yeah, so can you all tell us a little bit about why this project was started and what need it fills? Yeah, so the project was started um, by Pierre Raibaud, who is a French physicist. And uh, the main reason was that he wanted to, um, to facilitate the transition, the transition of his team from MATLAB to, to Python. So that's why he single-handedly uh, designed and created the SPIDER and also a, an old Python distribution called Python XY2 to, to distribute it with it. Okay, great, thank you for that. And I'm interested in learning more about uh, the history of the name and the logo. So yeah, the name, I mean, it looks pretty pretty cool, but, uh, but it's a, a, an acronym. It means the Scientific Python Development Environment. So awesome. it was also decided by Pierre. Before that, it was called PyD, and, uh, but fortunately he decided to change the name because it's way cooler, Spider. Yeah, that's definitely cool. And then yeah. you can also imagine all sorts of, you know, webs and things like that, right? So, exactly. Um, and we all want to have jokes in all of our code, right? Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little about alternative projects that exist out there? Um, so yeah, Carlos mentioned uh, Spider was aimed first at replacing MATLAB for Python users. So in this space, uh, a similar project for people out there, but in their language would be RStudio, which is a similar uh, kind of tool. Uh, specifically in the land of Python, there have been some other projects in the past that started. So I remember one of those uh, being Rodeo by a company called Y Hat. At some point, I think development stalled. Uh, so we're pretty much uh, unique in this, in this space, of course. Uh, now with the arrival of, of Jupyter Lab and uh, with all the different things that it will offer, uh, it might get close to what Spider has been offering for some time now. Okay, great. Well, history yeah, is very, very entertaining to hear about that, and I love the name. Uh, I'm interested in knowing who started Spider. So yeah, as I was it. saying, yeah, Spider was started by Pierre Raibo, um in 2009. So. I mean, we have a very long history, although we have been, we became popular um, sort of three or four years ago. But um, yeah, we have been uh, in this uh, open source arena for a long time. Um, and um, well, the, um, he was working for the uh, Commission of Atomic Energy of France at the time. Uh, he had a small team of developers. So as I, as I said, he wanted for his team to transition easily from, from MATLAB to Python. And I think Pierre, I mean, probably most people don't know about him, but I think he's one of the most talented uh, developers in the scientific Python community that I have ever seen, probably the top five. Unfortunately, he, he had to retire uh, some years ago and, and he, he left uh, the project to be maintained by me. Can you tell us a little about what technology it's built on? Yeah, sure. So Spider being a desktop application and being used in different platforms, uh, the main stack that we're using is uh, open source and free widget toolkit that is written in C++ called Qt. So that's uh, Qt. And what this toolkit allows is for you to create cross-platform applications in a way that the code base remains practically the same. So under the hood, they're connecting to, to each of the native toolkits. On top of this stack, uh, because we're on Python, we are using the bindings that connect us to Qt, which are provided by a couple of libraries, uh, PyQt5, which is developed by a company in England, I believe, and PySide, which is also developed by the Qt company, uh, the ones that develop uh, Qt. 
So on top of that, we also develop a couple of libraries. So some shims off top of PyQT and PyQT5 and PySites so that we have an, an uniform layer to access the different bindings without having to change the syntax. Uh, that's a project that we started some years ago and was living inside a spider and we took out so that other projects could benefit from this. Um, also on top of this, well, we have some panels that are based on web technologies or browser views. So we are also using JavaScript and CSS and other front-end technologies in general. Great, thank you. It was very good to hear also that uh, who started the project and it's obviously a great team uh, talking with all of you and getting to know all of you. Uh, so who maintains the project? So yeah, I maintain the project uh, right now. I have been doing that since 2013, since August of 2013. Um, before that, Pierre maintained it, and uh, unfortunately, he had to retire due to his uh, professional and family commitments. And uh, since then, well, I was working almost all by myself during approximately two more years. I mean, 2015, 2016. I have been in volunteer. I have been, well, previously to be maintained, I was a volunteer since 2010. And um, yeah, I had to learn way more things that I wanted to to just keep the project going yeah. and um, when i was working for anaconda at the end of 2016 uh, travis travis oliphant gave us uh, a little some budget to hire a, a little team to work with us and and afterwards uh, i entered uh, quantside in 2018 then i was working again by myself maintaining the project and now we have this great team that is helping me to, to do that work too. Yeah, it certainly makes it a lot more, um, I guess, relaxing switching from being a sole maintainer to having other maintainers to help the load, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. And most people don't know how much work goes in maintenance, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's really nice to have a team that is helping me now to really to to implement most most features, most new features. I I focus on on answering issues and answering questions in Stack Overflow and also, well, helping people. Um, but uh, I don't have time to develop anymore. <laughs> Very few time to develop. So they are the ones that really are uh, creating Spider or adding new features to Spider. Yeah, and maintenance can be so challenging also because you switch different parts of the code bases and you deal with all different types of users who have different exactly. levels of experience and things like that. Mm -hmm. So can you tell, can one of you tell me a little about what communities you see your users and contributors from as maintainers of the project? Sure. So uh, just on top to add on the previous question, it's also important that uh, a spider, although it looks like an unified project and interface, it's actually over 25, 27 different repositories of different pro of different uh, parts of the code that we have to maintain. So it's not just one issue tracker, it's over 10, over 20 issue trackers that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, luckily, we have a lot of contributors also from around the world. Uh, we don't have, well, I don't have any like specific numbers at this moment of where people are using it and how many, but the spider is interface is translated into a bunch of different languages. So we're pretty sure that people in those countries or at least countries where they speak this, uh, they're being used. So that includes Brazil, Canada, China, England, France, Germany, India, Iran, Japan, Poland, the Netherlands, also the USA. And of course, Colombia, where we have, uh, 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 well, the whole team currently today is, is from Colombia. But let's say that the core team, including people that are uh, core contributors and volunteer contributors, includes uh, six people from Colombia, plus two from Canada, plus two persons that live in the UK, but are from Netherlands and France. That's great. Well, it's good to see that, yeah, it seems like everyone's from a little bit all over the place, but you've also got a very strong group in Colombia, which I love Colombia. Um, so now let's check in with Stephanie and Juanita. Stephanie, could you please tell us a bit about this spider terminal? Um, sure. Um, basically, the spider terminal is a plugin that enables all the users to create terminals inside the spider ID. 
any abuses. Uh, yeah, that's it. Like, I'm um, library that's called Edison Isaiah, that's completely on JavaScript. So, basically, during the add-on of last year, I was working to visualize this project. I met multiple teachers that wouldn't have experience with the latest Spider 4. Um, so, it was super fun to use the two languages because, like, all of the part of XtremeJS is in JavaScript, and all the part that is put into a spider ID, it's on Python, so it was really nice to see how to put two programming languages to work together. Um, and basically, some of the cool improvements that um, what we did with this work was that, that the user has the ability to configure multiple preferences of the plugin. So, um, yeah, for instance, they can decide uh, which shell they can use in the terminal. So if I'm a Linux or a Mac user, I can decide if I want to start terminal using bash or TCSH or dash or anything that you can install it. Um, and also, um, you can configure which shortcuts you want to use for copying, pasting, creating new terminals and that kind of actions. Um, but my favorite improvement for like the new release of this terminal is that it is able to support the things that a spider ID has. So when the user just changes the theme, uh, the terminal will change as well to that theme. And that looks so nice on the UX part. It is super, super fun. <laughs> and uh, there's like also more options for the user to personalize the terminal, like to change the cursor style, or if you want to have a bell sound in it. So it is like really cool, yeah, for all the users that use the terminal inside an editor, yeah. Yeah, I love the flexibility that that offers too, that your users could switch depending on whatever their preference is, right? And so that makes it also really nice. But Spider also offers lots of configuration. So like, it seems like it's already, you already really have focused on flexibility. Um, but yeah, so Juanita, can you talk a little about the documentation that you've been working on, the documentation project you've been working on? Yeah, sure. Um, so a while ago, Carlos had the idea of um, making spiders um, better, um, not only because uh, of what, like, what we actually had was, was not like enough, but because there was a lot of improvements um, that we made with Spider 4 that are not part of the documentation. So, um, yeah, so I, I made this whole plan of, of doing the docs better by um, doing some tutorial videos so that like beginners can actually start working with Spider uh, without knowing anything about it. Um, and also I wanted to um, improve the visual aids um, on, the, on, the, on the docs for the people. Um, yeah, I think when you like actually see what's happening in, in the program, the people can um, understand it better. So I am working on doing GIFs, which has, uh, which has been really fun, um, a little difficult, but still fun, um, to kind of show um, some of the most important features on, on all the pains that Spider offers. And it's been a really challenging project because um, making documentation means you have to kind of um, empathize with users and kind of think what users would like to see Docs to understand um, not only like the most important features of, of the of the program, but like how can they make the most use of, of of it for whatever they need it. So it's been challenging, but I've I've been enjoying um, doing the docs a lot, and I've learned certainly a lot about Spider um, along the way. Um, so yeah, I I just I think it's a really important project, and um yeah, it it, it kind of it's going to. Um, uh, strengthen the relationship between the the, the users and, and the program. Um, I hope so. So um, we'll hopefully be finishing um, some of the things that we're we're doing by by next month. So so you would soon be able to to see all these cool things I'm I'm talking about. Great! I can't wait to we uh, see those things. And it's great to see that you're working on the documentation because we all know how important that is, not only for beginners but everyone else who wants to start using Spider. 
So now we're going to go into the project demo section, um, where basically we'll give you a walkthrough of uh, the project. We're going to show you how the technology works. It's very, very cool. And we're essentially going to show you some of the cool features on Spider. And then uh, we need to, while you're setting up, uh, could you please take, uh, we're going to take the opportunity to thank Quonsite for sponsoring this episode of Open Source Directions. Uh, Quonsite creating value from data. So when you're ready, Renita, uh, take it away. Yeah, so are you all seeing my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, well, I, I, I opened a project that um, we worked on on a workshop that we did. Um, and I, I, I run it before this because it was gonna take a little bit long. Um, but yeah, with this, I wanted just to show you basically um, the most important features that Spider has and like basically the ones that I use the most. So this one here is the editor. Um, and th this is where you write like most of the code um, you're working on. And um, well, yeah, I, 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 I also use the, the console a lot where you can just uh, kind of run some, some comments. So for instance, I could just um, do this print in the console and it just, I'll just get um, the rows here. So this basically is a project um, that we were doing for like, um, um, weather analysis um, history from 2006 to 2016. And um, it, was, it was meant to be for data visualization and, and analysis. So there's a lot of plots and variables here, but I wanted to show you um, some of the cool um, things that the variable exporter has that is one of the other panes that I use the most. So for instance, here, um, I made a graph of the, of the correlations between some of the variables. And Spire has this cool, this cool feature that it shows you um, the um, colors on on the yeah, on, on the data frame depending on, on on the numbers. So these dark numbers are the are the ones that are like close to one, and this um, yeah more pink ones are, are the, the smallest ones. Um, and there's there's um, so there's a, a viewer for for each kind of 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 data in in, in Spire. So for instance. Um, let me show you this. So you can you can um, like change any values here, uh, which makes it easier to manipulate your data. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of options here in the variable explorer. You can save your data, which which I, I sorry it's here, uh, which I think is really um, useful when you're like working a really huge project and you have a lot of variables. You can just like save your your data. Uh, then ex imported back then into the into the pane, um, and the other like my other favorite pane is the plots pane um, that shows you all the plots you you work on on your, on your project. Uh, these are all the plots that I generated with Matplotlib, um, and you can also save them as PNGs or SVGs. Um, yeah, you you can have a lot of them, and they they depend on the console you're working on. So if you want to like kind of have a new console to work on some new um, some new plots. Um, this this plots will like go away for for for, uh, for your new console. Um, and the other pane um, that is really really useful is the help pane, um, in which you could get uh, documentation for um, any like thing that you 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 want. So, oh wait, it's loading. You can use the, the IPython console to show documentation on top because I think you're having an error <laughs> with the language, the language server. So use the console to get documentation instead. Okay. Okay, yeah, so here you can, um, if you choose the console here, you can just um, kind of type anything that you, you'll, you'll find documentation for. And if it is available, available it will display it here. Um, and options to switch from rich text to plain text and, and show the source of, of it. Um, and then, so I think those are the, the four um, like main panes that um, at least I use the most. Um, but there's also this history pane where you can see all the, all the commands you've entered in this and the past sessions. Um, and this files pane where I think it just like shows you in a really easy way um, the files and you can like search the files on your computer in the files pane. Um, and here, 
you can also have access to the outlines pane, the projects pane, which is like it shows you the, the outline when you're like working with projects. Um, and another one that I like a lot is the code analysis um, that it lets you analyze your code. And well, I run the analysis before this because it was also going to take long. And it gives you a global evolution of your of your code. Um, yeah, regarding the syntax and like how the, the way that you actually read your code. And it gives you some suggestions so you can um, like kind of make better your code. So yeah, I think um, that's some of the, of the basic things that um, that you you can like work with Spider in. And I think yeah, I mean we'll we'll post some tutorials also um, soon, so so you can actually um, yeah learn more about it. Great, thank you very much, Manito. I appreciate that. We've got the infinite <laughs> screens there. Uh, we're now going to pass it on to Stephanie. Sure, I'm going to show you uh, some of the some of the new features of uh, of Spider terminals. Um, okay, now. So basically, um, I already installed the terminal on your spider and you don't see it. You should go to view panes and be sure that the terminal is stick on so you can see it. And it will appear on the bottom part of spider next to the history tab. So basically this is my terminal. So as you can see, it just do all the things that um, like a system terminal will do. So I can move, I don't know, to my desktop and I can list all the things that I have there. I can also, um, let me see if I have, um, uh, for example, I can see uh, like uh, the contains of, um, of a file that's empty, so um, <laughs> the middle one that has something inside of it. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's get into the spider. So, for example, if I get, want to see the setup, so I will be able to have all the file here. Uh, so basically, it just do the same things that a common terminal will do. Uh, so if you want to change the and personalize the terminal a little more, you can go to the preference tab and to the terminal. And then in here you can change the shell interpreter you're working on. So these are all the options that I have available on my computer, as well as the cell preferences for the type of cursor and if I want to have this sound in the terminal or not. So I'm going to change um, the shell to C -C -A -S -H, sorry, and I'm going to change the cursor type to an underline. Uh, when you change the shell interpreter, you will need to do a fresh restart of Spider, so I'm going to do that. So we have time. we'll wait a moment that it reloads, so we can apply the changes. Mm, okay. So now I'm not using bash, but Cita SH for my terminal. I still can do all the things I could have done before. And my personal favorite is that uh, when you change the appearance of spider, so I'm going to change the theme to this spider that we use on spider three. Um, and I will hit apply I'm going to ask me for a restart as well. So we're going to restart again. <laughs> Before we restart, yeah, Gonzalo just pointed out something. So ask any questions as we're going along uh, in this section. In the next section, if you have anything, just ask them in the chat and we'll uh, get to those questions at the end. So as you can see right now, uh, our terminal changed within the colors of spider. So yeah, it is super cool. Uh, I'm in a Mac machine, so I cannot just show all the colors that the terminal can put. But if you're in a Linux system, you can put each top and it will just show off like the, the complete colors that the terminal has. So 
yeah, these are some of the things that you can, you know, modify the terminal list that were not previously like available for the user to do. So yeah, it is pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for sharing. I appreciate that. That was great to see uh, some cool features and how the technology works. Now that we've gone through the product demo and we've seen the technology behind the scenes, we're going to go in and talk about the future of Spider and we're going to discuss its roadmap uh, and where it's heading, which I'm very, very excited to talk about. So in, on that note, uh, Carlos, I'd like to pass it over to you. Yes. So, well, uh, thanks to TDK Micronas, we will have um, a funding for 2021. I mean, for, not for this year, sorry, and hopefully for 2021. So we have a lot of features planned for Spider 5. Right now, we are trying to stabilize Spider 4. We have put a lot of effort on that. And we will continue to do that at least for the next three or four months. But we already we are already planning what we're going to add for Spider 5. So one of some of the cool features are the following. First, we, we plan to add um, an HTML viewer for web generated content from code. So what does that what does that mean? So the thing is that right now, all for example, all plots that are generated in Spider are static plots. As Juanita showed, they are only um, inlay images generated by Matplotlib, and we we are showing them in the plots pane. So our idea is to develop a new kind of pane that will be able to show uh, web content, for example, that comes from libraries like um, Bulky and Plotly and Altair, and also from MyPy widgets and B BQ plot and things like that. So people will have access to um, inside the spider to this kind of web generated content. That will be really cool because right now, I mean, you have to resort to the Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab to, to explore that kind of content. So sometimes people prefer to use a more traditional IDE to do that kind of job. And, uh, and that's uh, our plan. People have also requested that for a very long time. Unfortunately, the, I mean, the, the things that we had in Spider 4 were very, very huge and very time consuming. We changed a lot of code, so we didn't have time to do that for that version, but for sure it will be in Spider 5. And since that requires a mix of JavaScript and, and Python and PyQt content, then Stephanie is the one that's going to be in charge of that because she's kind of an expert now on how to do that. And, um, can, you, can, you, can you describe yeah. a little bit like what that, um, like the HTML, are you loading it locally or would you allow somebody to kind of add a URL and it would automatically render in their terminal so, or something? First way, we are considering just to load local content. Okay. The thing is that, um, I mean, since we are using in the background the, the same Jupyter technology that powers uh, Jupyter Lab, mm -hmm. we we plan to, I mean, to grab the content that comes from from generated for, for example, a bucket plot, right. and then redirect it to a, to a pane that will be able to show uh, to show that that content inside a web widget. The good thing about Qt is that it provides a web widgets. And those widgets in, in the background are powered by, by Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome. So it's, it's basically like running or, mm -hmm. or exploring the, the, those contents, those web generating contents inside, inside Chrome, basically. So that'll, really, so that'll really allow a lot of your users to preview their dashboarding applications locally, it exactly. sounds like, right? Exactly. Any kind of content, for example, panel generates very nice plots or, mm -hmm. or voila. So yeah. those will be able to to be um, rendered inside the spider itself. So and and plotly too. For example, many people have asked us to to have a way to to generate plotly plots inside spider. And right now that's not possible. I mean, it's possible using a specific backend that plotly developed to show uh, static content. But of course, the the nice thing about plotly and also alter and book is that you can uh, uh, move sliders and pan and, and do zoom in and things like that. And right now that's not possible, but it will be in Spider 5. So that's the first thing. The second thing, it's um, bookmarks in the editor. So um, uh, using book, when you're working in a mid-size or large projects, you want to have kind of a bookmark, bookmarks facility 
for example, to say, uh, to remember that you have to change this class in this file and this method in this other file and, and mix the two and move between those two, those two places in the code quite quickly and quite easily. So that's another feature that uh, people have requested us for a very long time. It's issue like 610 and we have 2000 issues. So you wow. can remember wow. that, yeah. Wow. It's, it's a very, very old issue. Right now, I mean, in Spider 4, a, a contributor, a volunteer contributor added the backend for that. And, and <clears throat> right now we have to add or to develop the user interface to provide a nice experience for that. And uh, we we really plan to do that. Unfortunately, again, we didn't have time to to implement it in Spider Four, but it's for sure it's for sure going to be in Spider Five. Another thing that it will be very very cool um, and some um, it's a feature that our studio has already, and it's um, uh, filtering data in the data frame viewer. So Juanita showed that we already have a very nice data frame viewer. But unfortunately, you can filter uh, data inside the viewer. And if you have, for example, that nowadays it's usual to have uh, data frames with uh, one, uh, 100,000 rows or 1 million rows. So if you could filter, for example, for a specific uh, categorical features or for a specific numeric features between certain ranges or things like that, it would be really, really useful. Um, there are some extensions in Jupyter Lab that could do that. But, um, well, it's kind of limited, at, at, I think, but we, we plan to, to implement that in Qt, um, I mean, graphically in the viewer and also using pandas in the background to do the filtering. So hopefully it will be really, really uh, fast and also useful for the users. Um, another thing that we also plan to add, and it's more like a backend feature, but it will be really useful too, especially for data frames, is that <clears throat> we plan to, to integrate with a library called Pyaro. So Pyaro uh, <clears throat> allows uh, people to have, um, I mean, <clears throat> to, to not copy um, um, data frames when you're trying to explore it from two different processes. So in our case, we have the graphical interface, which lives in one process, and the console where we evaluate code that lives in a different process. So uh, for example, when you create a data frame, as wanted to show, that lives in the console. So we have to serialize it. So make creating a copy of the data frame and move it to Spider to show it in the viewer. That, right now, that works very well for small data frames and uh, one million rows or things like that. But people ha uh, have told us that they want to explore 100 million data frames. So that's really impossible because it will take a, a lot of memory to create a copy in the kernel and move it to Spider. So that's huge. But Payaro allows to, instead of doing a proper serialization, create what is called a memory object uh, or memory view object, sorry. And that, and that it's a, a special kind of object in Python that allows to share uh, objects between two processes uh, with uh, the, that, but instead of sharing exact, the, the object exactly, they just share the memory address of the object. So that, that uh, doesn't require a copy and in the kernel and spider, but just accessing the memory object in the kernel and that would be really, really cool. So that will allow us to simply, by users doing double clicking in the variable explorer, creating uh, and viewing any kind, any size of data frame. I mean, if you have enough memory to create a data frame with one million, one, uh, 100 million rows, you will be able to see it in spider too. And lastly, um, I mean, from, from my side, um, we were, well, another cool feature that it's coming along very well is that we have a, a specific plugin to integrate the Spider Notebook, uh, sorry, the, the Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook within a Spider to, show, to kind of work with it as if it were a desktop application. So it's kind of alpha-ish, alpha beta-ish right now. But it's working really well, and one of our, of our core developers is moving that from uh, the classical notebook to Jupyter Lab. So that's coming really, really well, and it will be available in the next months. It's not sort of a feature in for Spider 5 because it's developed as a separate project, but uh, it will be for sure with some additions that Gonzalo is going to talk about right now. Uh, it will 
be integrated much more nicely into Spider. So that's from my side, and now Gonzalo will continue with so the other features. I have a quick question have a before, question we, before um, we transition. Yeah. transition. Um, um, so can you tell us a little bit about, like some of you, it sounds like, are already working on some of these features. Are there, um, are some of them ones that you would like new contributors to maybe work on with you? Are there places in some of these new features where that would be helpful to you? Or, um, and if so, which ones? So for example, in the bookmarks, bookmarks editor feature, um, we will value the feedback from the community. So, I mean, for example, Cam, one of our contri co uh, volunteer contributors, um, well, he's helping us to, to understand how to design a good uh, user interface for that. So usually, I mean, Spider is right now like more than 70,000 70, lines of code. So it's kind of a big project. It's not easy to, to, to start developing for it, but, but we still re, we will value a lot the, the, the feedback from the community for these features. For example, how to, how to cre create good filters and how people think good filters could be created for the data frame viewer. Those kind of things are really, really helpful. And for example, Stephanie, um, with the help of a contributor these past weeks, have, um, implemented very nice features to move with the cursor among files. And that was basically driven by the, the discussion with the contributor. So we just maintain a lot of, of, of talk with him, him or her, because we don't know who, who he was, who they was. But uh, but it was really, really nice. So that, those kind of feedback is really valuable. OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so go ahead, Gonzalo. Sorry about that. I think you're muted. Oh, sorry. You're good. You're good now. OK, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. OK, sorry. Yeah, my things. Uh, no, I would say that it's, it's a great question because uh, as Carlos said, it's not always easy to to jump in on such a big project and see how things work because even a simple change demands knowing where to look for it, and that's uh, that that is not always easy. So we're looking always for new contributors, and if there is someone willing to put some time on in learning a bit of this framework and how it's integrated, we're more than happy to to provide some time in in teaching them how they can help us more. Yeah, so you actually, this gives me a follow-up question for you, which is you mentioned earlier that your um, spider is kind of across several different repositories, right? So if somebody wants to come into the project, where should they start and where would be a good place for them to look and to contribute? Yeah, so we're, we're a lot of repositories in terms of different tools or different projects that complement spider or mm -hmm are used by Spider under the hood, but still the main point of entry to work with Spider should be the main Spider repository, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is at GitHub at the Spider ID organization. Let me type that for you. Uh, so you, the first entry point should be github.com spider-ide spider. So that's where everyone can come. And that's the main entry point in the issue tracker. Uh, uh, Juanita will talk us a bit more about our social networks as well, but uh, we're also available on Gitter. So if anyone has a question regarding how to start working with it, they can reach out on Gitter. That's probably the easiest way. We're not always there. Uh, it's not like a live chat like we would like to it to be, but unfortunately, we are limited on resources. But we're making efforts to improve that. I would also like to mention, Gonzalo, to complement that, that we also have a contributing guide. I posted the link in, in the chat too. So it kind of details um, how to create a development environment, uh, how to, I mean, uh, if you want to add new content, for example, icons or code from other projects, what licenses are uh, compatible with ours. And also we have very tight integrations with two external projects called, called Spider Kernels and Python language server. We also describe there how to work with those projects in case you want to 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 do um, to add pull requests or to make code changes in those projects that also affect the spider. So yeah, that's usually the, the main uh, entry point to to for new contributors. Thanks, Carlos. So just to go a little bit more on 
on the roadmap and we're planning for Spider 5 and beyond is, well, code is important, but of course we, we care about our users and we want them to have a native experience. So one thing that we are planning and having, and this is a call uh, to contributors around, is we want to have more languages uh, available in, in the Spider interface. So as I mentioned before, we have currently Chinese, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, uh, French, uh, a bit of Persian, a bit of Polish, a bit of Hungarian. So it's growing. We're using a, a web in a web platform called Crowding. Well, we'll post the link uh, at the end where you can come into your browser or even your mobile phone and start helping us with translating the different strings of the interface into your native language. So just, so we are expanding that, and this is a call to more people to help us. Uh, on the other hand, there is going to be an extensive rework of the insights of the spider regarding how the different components interact with each other, what we call plugins. So uh, spider is divided in a set of um, visual panels where you see the console, you see the editor, and non-visual things that might be some menu, uh, some linting functionality or something on the status bar. So the way these plugins interact and the API to extend Spider is something that is currently being reworked as part of Spider 5. And the aim is to provide a much simpler experience for uh, third party uh, plugin developers so that they can extend Spider how they see fit into specific domain areas. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm currently working on. I'm very excited to where it's coming along. Uh, with this work, we're going to be able to expose in a much easier way all the different actions that are available in a Spider. So anytime you click a menu on a Spider or you execute a shortcut, this is executing some action. So now we're going to include something similar to what other uh, inter uh, development environments have like JupyterLab and Visual Studio, like we're going to add a command palette so that users can browse all the different uh, actions that they can take from this menu. And every time a new plugin is developed by a third party developer, all these actions that are, are exposed there are also going to be added to this command palette. So this is going to provide a much uh, richer experience for users also because they might start using less their mouse and stay on with the hands on the keyboards, which at the end will make you more productive. Uh, on top of that, something that we're also borrowing from uh, JupyterLab and other, and other interfaces is we're, there are some uh, panels that sometimes you need to be able to hide and show easily and on the left kind of way. So we're going to be adding a sidebar that will allow you to dock different plugins into this section so that you can easily switch among them and not have your interface crowded. So this is also some nice work we're going to try to do to simplify the, the user interface. Uh, another feature that we're planning on adding uh, major support is something that users have been asking for a long time and is adding version control support. So currently the support for that in Spider is very limited, only on projects and only a couple of actions. So we're going to work on integration with another open source project called Git Cola that is also built with Qt and PyQt so that we can, we don't have to like uh, reinvent the wheel from zero, but we can reuse a lot of the cool features that they have provided, but integrate them better within Spider so that users have a very rich uh, version control experience within Spider. Is the version control just for Git or would it be for other version control? Um, so, uh, so being, so thanks. So being Git, the major platform that we are aiming and using, it's going to be initially just for Git. And since we are relying on an external project that is providing this support for Git, uh, it's going to be only for Git. Uh, at some point we were considering also having support for uh, Mercurial, but this is something that could eventually be extended with plugins if users are interested enough. Uh, because currently, I think all the team is very well versed with Git, but not other type of version control systems. So we are going to really need a hand if we want to support more systems. Uh, one thing also that 
we want to improve is, and I think I saw one of the questions going into that direction is that uh, currently you can connect to uh, remote spider kernels in the spider console, but the process of connecting to it is not the easiest. You have to generate the JSON configuration file on the side of the external server and start the kernel and make sure that it's a spider kernel because we need a, a specific kernel that knows how to talk uh, to spider about the other things that spider needs. And then you need to put this configuration on the spider side. So it's possible, but it's cumbersome and it's not the greatest uh, user experience. So we really want to simplify how users can start uh, these external servers and install any new packages that they need on the on that side and connect to that kernel without having to go to the process of copy pasting a JSON blob. So that's also like a cool feature we're looking forward to. And finally, in the roadmap, something that we want to do is that uh, Spider has been since its inception uh, a project aimed for Python, for scientific Python development, and it's written in Python. But uh, in this area of scientific uh, computing, we sometimes need to work with our languages. So one thing that we want to support is providing first class support for other languages that are relevant for this scientific computing. Uh, this can be R, Julia, uh, C, C++. And in this, and what this means is not only providing a, a, what this first class support means is that you can create these files, get all the linting and introspection capabilities, but also you connect to the help panels and the consoles and use the consoles to access these languages. So really have all the access to all the cool tools that we currently provide for the Python language available for other languages. Wow, that's, that's great. Thank you very much for that. We're actually gonna call everyone who's watching and ask you to fill out a poll to help out this team, uh, the Spider team, and give them an idea of what language they should uh, provide first class support for next. So if you just go to the poll section, it's just to the right of the questions tab. Uh, and let us know uh, your answers. Now we're going to uh, we're getting to the end of the episode, sadly, but we're going to be answering a few questions from the audience. So thank you very much for asking these questions. Uh, I'll kick it off with a question from Rick. Can you compare Spider to Octave? Sure. So well, Octave, it's um, basically a free implementation of MATLAB. So it uh, it has the same features and the same disadvantages of MATLAB. The, I mean, of the la programming language that MATLAB provides. And uh, it also added a cool uh, new um, graphical interface a couple of years ago to work with it. Um, I use it in, in a couple of courses. It's really nice, works really well. I mean, not if you want to develop, at least at the, when I use it, you want to, to work with uh, huge amounts of data. <clears throat> Sorry, um, but um, the main difference is that Octave it's uh, a clone of MATLAB basically, but Spider is not. Spider just copied sort of the graphical interface of MATLAB, and uh, but we we have added a lot of improvements during the years. But we we are we allow people to work uh, with Python, so it's based for now. Uh, it's an IDE for scientific Python. So it's, we don't provide support for MATLAB or, or things like that. We, users can load uh, MATLAB files um, that have been saved in the in the MATLAB workspace in Spider. That's possible uh, using SitePipe, but that's the only in kind of integration that we provide for MATLAB. Other than that, uh, MATLAB uh, Octave is for the MATLAB programming language, and Spider is for Python. Okay, great. Thanks for answering that. Um, our next question is from Even P. Uh, how has it been choosing Qt in terms of portability all smoothly, especially now that so many apps are choosing Electron slash, Electron slash JavaScript? Not my cup of tea, by the way. So thanks, Ivan, for the question. So yeah, yes, I mean, nowadays, uh, the go-to solution for creating a cross-platform application is basically just using web technologies and embedded in an electron app. So that's that's the standard nowadays. And in that aspect, uh, Spider is more 
on the traditional side of things. So by using Qt, we have both advantages and disadvantages. In terms of what we want to achieve in terms of cross-platform portability and a desktop-like experience for users that really want to have that, uh, Qt is, is by far the best, the best framework that we could work with. I mean, we didn't get to choose it. We just continue working on it. But at this point, Qt is really well structured and designed to, to fit our needs. Uh, on that side, then the question is like, yeah, could you like port Spider to the web browser or something like that? And then it's like, Qt has other set of technologies to do that. Uh, we could use them, but that's not our plan at the moment. Uh, so, so really Qt and PyQt has provided uh, an incredible foundation to work and do what we need. Uh, it does limit you in terms of when you do a web application, you can, I mean, the sky is the limit. You can create buttons that work as something else, or you can create interfaces that uh, don't mimic traditional things that you will find on, on the desktop. On the other hand, by using Qt, which is geared to the desktop, we have much better integration with the file system, accessing shortcuts, and accessing the underlying system and providing an experience for a user that actually looks native. So one thing with uh, web applications is that they circumvent the problem, but they all look the same, whatever they are run. So that for some people that's convenient, for some people that's not really nice because you have your desktop that looks somehow, and then you open something that looks completely different. So cute by, by hooking to the underlying uh, graphical system of each, of each uh, operating system is really providing a native feel for everything. So even a spider has some things that are specific and global in all systems. It will look like a Mac application or it will look like a Linux application or it will look like a Windows application. And this for some of our users is very important. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, I appreciate it, Gonzalo. Sorry, you got yeah, Stephanie? Uh, uh, also, so like, uh, I don't know if you have seen that all the Electron apps are really heavy for your computer and that doesn't happen with Spider. Like you can have Spider running for hours and it will not consume that many things like hardware of your computer. That's like some downside that has, that all the Electron apps have. Okay, great. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Sadly, we're out of time now, so we won't be able to answer any more questions. Um, but if you want to maybe provide some answers in the chat, that'd be good. Or um, we'll just have to move on now. I uh, will quickly go through our, our famous uh, rant and rave section, where we basically get 15 seconds to rant or rave about whatever topic we want. Um, so Carlos, Gonzalo, Stephanie, and Juanita, it is your soapbox and you're up. Uh, Carlos, you want to kick it off? Okay. Yeah, my, my main rant right now is that it's, it's, we, it's 2020 and Spider is really hard to install. We have, I have seen users and we have seen users fighting a lot to install Spider. It's really annoying. But the good thing, and that's my rate too, we're planning to create our own installers that will be completely isolated and won't try to load things from other Python installations in the system. And hopefully they will work very well. Uh, we plan to release them at the end of the summer, probably. Um, and they will be at initially just for, for Mac and Windows. Thank you. And Gonzalo? Yes. Uh, so yeah, uh, my rant right now is that I am very much uh, annoyed and frustrated at developers not, um, not embracing how to formatting tools of code like Black. So we keep wasting so much time of developers, contributors, my pull request reviewers by saying, put a comma here, move this parenthesis, whatever. Or, or we don't use these tools because we just say the code does not look like I want it to. So that's just really annoying. We should, as a community, just embrace this tool and move to more important things like what the code is doing and know how it looks. And yeah, this is something that we could learn from other communities like, like Go. I mean, they settled with Go format tool and they moved on. Right, thank you. We need it, you're up. 
questions is about how um, people in open source projects underestimate the importance of documentation and how there's not enough developers working on documentation. Um, and I guess it's also an invitation for, for, for you to, to embrace uh, working on documentation because it also influences the way that users relate to software. So yeah, let's go for more documentation. Here, here, awesome, yes. I'm Stephanie. Um, well, really, I'm arguing about <laughs> uh, something that happened to me like a week ago that I went to the grocery store and all the people just bought all the ice cream. And my only goal that day was to go and buy some ice cream. <laughs> like, I cannot work without ice cream. So, yeah, I don't know. I, it was a really sad day. <laughs> Please don't buy all the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that is sad. And Majigan, you're up. OK, yeah, I promise I won't buy all the ice cream. So if we lived in the same place, I wouldn't steal your ice cream. I want to rave about um, the US Postal Service. Uh, they have some very cool stamps. They have some T-Rex ones that like are holographic. And uh, some Sesame Street kids ones. So I'm extremely into them. And you can order them online. So. You know. I love it. That's great. Uh, my my rave, I've got a rave this week, and it's just going to be a quick one, but I ran 10Ks for the first time. Uh, I don't know what they're quite, I think six and a half miles or just over that. So it was good. But uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks for listening, and thank you all for being such amazing guests. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Open Teams Inc. and at Quonsite AI. Uh, now, where can we find you and Spider? Okay, so we have uh, our main uh, web page. Um, yeah, so we're posting the links there. But we also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, where I constantly post, um, I mean, things regarding these events or other live sessions that we are working on or any updates and any blog posts that we do. Um, and we're going to have also a YouTube channel soon where we're going to be posting the documentation videos I was talking about. And, and yeah, so basically Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and hopefully um, I can get um, some of the answers that we're like missing in this session in, in some of our social media for, for people that couldn't get their answers to kind of get them there. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, so here's our call to action for all open source contributors. Sign up to Open Teams today to build your online profile. Claim your contributions and get recognized for the great work you've done on open source projects that you care about. Uh, so join us again next episode for an open discussion with Open Tech Response. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you for attending. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye.